This morning, Nikon officially announced the newest camera to their lineup, the Nikon Z8. Is this a camera that you should be considering for bird photography? In this video, I'll talk through what we know and share my initial impressions. Let's get to it. Now I've not personally shot with a Z8 yet, but Nikon has confirmed that the Z8 is identical to their flagship Z9, with a few changes that we'll discuss in a moment. As an owner of the Z9, I've used it extensively for wildlife photography as my main body, and so I feel I have enough hands-on experience to make my recommendation now that we've seen the specs for the Z8. But first, just a tiny little bit of housekeeping. If you're a regular subscriber to the channel and you've been waiting for part 5 of my spring migration series, don't worry, that video is still coming out Friday and it's a good one, so please tune in. And if gear reviews aren't really your thing, you might want to go ahead and skip this one. Okay, now on to the video. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through the specs for the camera, because just about every well-known photography YouTuber has already done that. I do, however, want to spend a few moments talking about how the Z8 is identical to my Z9. Let's start with the camera body. Both cameras share the same 45 megapixel stacked CMOS sensor. They both can shoot raw photos at 20 frames per second, JPEG at 30 frames per second, crop JPEGs at 60 frames per second, and 11 megapixel JPEGs at a whopping 120 frames per second. Both can shoot video at 8K 60 frames per second and 4K at 120 frames per second. Both cameras crucially also have the exact same autofocus capabilities. They share a totally silent electronic shutter with readout speeds that practically eliminate any issues with rolling shutter. The button layout on both cameras is virtually identical, and both cameras share the same articulating screen. Okay, so now let's talk about the key differences between the two. The biggest difference between these two cameras is the size. The Z8 has been called a baby Z9 by some reviewers, and that's because it's significantly lighter. Weighing in at 910 grams versus the Z9's 1,340, the camera is significantly smaller and lighter, but that comes with a few sacrifices. The first is battery life, which is about half of the Z9's. The Z8 uses the smaller ENEL15Cs that are used with both the Nikon Z7 series and the Nikon Z7 series, as opposed to the ENEL18Ds that are used in the Nikon Z9. Try saying that three times fast. The second difference is the loss of a second CF Express Type B slot, now replaced by an SD card slot. The third difference is the shorter maximum video recording time. Presumably the smaller body is less capable of reducing heat buildup in the camera, and so you can't shoot for just quite as long. The last but possibly the most critical difference between the two is the price. Compared to the Nikon Z9's price tag of $5,500 US dollars, the Nikon Z8 is practically the same camera for only $4,000 US dollars. So, as a wildlife photographer, can I recommend this camera? In terms of the characteristics that the Z8 shares with the Z9, I can really speak to that, and I can say absolutely it is worth the upgrade. Let me start by saying that the Nikon Z9 has been an absolute game changer for me. Prior to the Z9, I was shooting with a Z6 II, and don't get me wrong, I love the camera. In fact, I'm recording this very video with it. But for wildlife, and especially bird photography, the Z9 just completely blew it out of the water. With the Z6 II, I found myself constantly frustrated by the autofocus system. Sometimes with birds, you have just a few crucial moments to get a shot of a bird in flight, and you just have to rely on the camera's autofocus system to come to your aid. Time and time again, with the Z6 II, I found myself just missing shots. The Z9, on the other hand, has blown me away with its ability to deliver in fast-paced and difficult scenarios that involve autofocus. 
The larger 45 megapixel sensor on the camera also has been very beneficial for those times when I need to crop an image. Compared to the 24 megapixel sensor on the Z6 II, I have a lot more wiggle room now when I need to shoot maybe a tiny bird and crop in. So, if you do want to upgrade, should you choose the Z8 or the Z9? I think this really comes down to what you have and what your personal needs are. If you prefer the smaller size of the Z8 and you don't mind sacrificing the battery life and CF Express card slot, the Z8 is absolutely the right choice here. I know I would have preferred a much smaller, lighter body that didn't sacrifice on performance for my trip when I went to South Africa this year. The domestic flights were very strict about weight restrictions, and this camera could have definitely lightened my pack. I also think about long hikes, where I could have packed a lighter camera and a few extra batteries and memory cards, but I wasn't going to sacrifice performance of the camera. I, I think that could really make a big difference. But if you do need the extra battery or a vertical grip, or you're a professional that relies on those dual CF Express slots and you don't mind spending an extra $1,500 for them, then honestly, I would stick with the Z9. Also, if you're a D850 user that's been waiting for a similar body to make the jump to mirrorless or to take advantage of some of the new excellent Z glass, this is probably the camera for you. So what if you're like me and you already own a Z9? Well, as a Z9 user, I actually don't feel compelled to buy the Z8 at least right away, but I do think it would make an excellent second body when the time comes for me to buy one, so I'll definitely be considering one at that time. Okay, so I think that's it. I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts and this will be helpful as you consider the Z8 for your wildlife photography needs. See you in the next one.